Hey children, today we are going to learn Agriculture in India Part 2 Food Crops. As you know, it is chapter number 11. Today we are learning the different type of food crops. Do you know what is food crop? Food crops are that crop which are used for eating, which are used for consumption. For example, rice is the food crop, wheat, millets, jawar, bajra, ragi, these are the food crops. Same way, wheat is also the food crop, millet is also the food crop. That means what is non-food crop? Non-food crops like uh, rubber, tea, coffee, these are beverage crop. So these are called non-food crops, sugar cane, cotton, juice, these are non-food crop. In this chapter we are going to learn about uh, do you know the rice is cultivated in India two categories, upland rice and low land rice. What is the upland rice? Means the rice cultivation which is uh, in the hilly area. That is also called dry land rice. And another one is the wetland rice which is grown in the plain and flat area, river valleys or low lying area, plain area. So rice is cultivated throughout the country. It is a staple food of the people of the southern parts of the country as well as in the northeastern parts of the country. What do you mean by the staple food? Staple food means which is directly used for consumption as a main food crop. Rice, if we will talk about the season, this is Kharif season. Kharif means summer season. So broadly talking, if we will talk Kharif season, one idea is very much clear in our mind that high temperature is required since the summer season we know the monsoon comes in India and monsoon that means the heavy rain. So heavy rain means how much amount of range of rainfall that is 100 to 200 centimeter and so very first point remember the temperature it requires showing period by high temperature 16 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius up to harvesting period. So it requires very high temperature. We will talk about the range of rainfall that is between 100 to 200 centimeter of the rainfall and that is heavy amount of rainfall. As we know that southwest monsoon bring plenty of rain throughout the country and another important factor, the geographical one that is the soil factor. So what is the soil requirement for this type of crop? The soil which required that is uh, we know uh, categories of soil. Uh, that is clay content which contain more amount of moisture, the alluvial soil. South India black soil that is also highly useful. Coastal alluvium soil, deltic soil, low line area soil, middle river valley soil, upper river valley soil, lower river valley soil. So variety of soil that means a rice grow in variety of soil. But among that variety of soil which one is the best one for the cultivation of the rice? that is deep fertile clay soil or friable loam. What is clay means? Clay means which contain high proportion of moisture. So that is a clay content which retaining much longer duration of time. The water holding capacity is more and that's why rice grow well in such type of soil. And moreover we know the rice consume lot of water and that's why summer is the best ideal condition for the growth of the rice. We will talk about harvesting period of rice that is bright sunshine is very essential, flooded fields are very common in India, plenty of sunshine, heavy amount of rainfall and wherever just like Punjab, Haryana, here the rainfall is not very high then how the rice is abundant in these states because with the help of irrigation. So irrigation is the backbone of agriculture. And that's why in the per hectare productivity, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, these are higher. Do you know that which state in India is the highest rice producing state? That is West Bengal and Tamil Nadu. So these are the states. And beside that, there are so many other states. Now we are talking about which are the methods of rice cultivation. There are the five methods of rice cultivation, as you know that. Very first method that is the current broadcasting method, second is the dibbling method, third is the drilling method, fourth is the transplantation method and fifth is the Japanese method of the rice cultivation. Look at a glance what all of these. What is broadcasting method? That is also called a scattered method in which the farmer grows the seeds and scattered in the field 
so seats are drawn all across the field there is not much more clear in this method so crop grow as it is without any proper manure or fertilizer so yield is also very less in such method second one is the dibbling method dibbling is the name comes from dibber dibber is a kind of machine do you know the dibber means the seeds are dropped at the regular intervals on the furrows made by the farmer with the help of plow or dibber so that dibber or that plow it got its name uh, dibbling so dibbling is another method third one method is the drilling method drilling is uh, while using the plow uh, seeds are dropped here again with the regular interval but here bamboo shaft are used so bamboo shaft through the bamboo shaft seeds are dropped at the regular intervals and this bamboo shaft it attached with the plow as the plow moves then seeds are dropped at the proper interval so in this way uh, seeds wastage of seeds are avoided in this method and it is uh, a very time consuming that's why it is one of the disadvantage of this method and in some of the dry area what the farmer do they soak the seeds in water for a few hours before showing do you know why it helps in quick germination but it is particularly rare in drier parts of the country and next is very common methods and it is asked in the board question time and again what is transplantation method is very common in india transplantation as a word transplant means once it is already planted again it is transplanted let's see understand what is that in transplanted method first the seeds are shown in well prepared nursery beds for example a uh, field is there and in the field suppose this is the field and well prepared in this way furrows are built and here rice are shown this is called germination bed or these are called seed beds and here the uh, seed grow for 4 to 5 weeks or somewhere 3 to 4 weeks and when it acquire the height of uh, 20 cm around then it is uprooted then it makes a bundle bundled that uh, seedlings and that bundled seedling brought into well prepared ground means another ground is prepared there it is transplanted a regular interval with the help of hand so plenty of labor is required so this is the one of the uh, bulk manual uh, manual labor is required advantage of this method is quite significant lot of labor is required which is where uh, available because india is the populous country and we know that the cheap labor is easily available second important thing when re-showing the weeds are removed that is also advantage and third advantage that wastage of the seeds in broadcasting method in this method there is no such wastage of the seeds and what we talk about the finally the japanese method of rice cultivation it is uh, only required in very few part of the country particularly where the farmers are very rich in such areas japanese cultivation actually the word japanese means it is very common and popular method where in japan because there everything is used in bulk quantity maybe high in variety of seeds maybe manure fertilizer pesticide insecticide everything they use more in quantity i can say as compared to transplantation method which is very common in india three times more than transplantation method all the quantity of seeds quantity of manure quantity of fertilizer chemical pesticide insecticide that is bulk in quantity used in japanese method of rice cultivation harvesting harvesting and processing harvesting of rice is done by the hand as we know uh, particularly but somewhere it is uh, with the help of combined harvester is used uh, when it is uh, crop is completely dry in the field it is cut out and 3 4 days it is left as it is in the field after harvesting the crop do you know why to dry the crop to dry the grain to dry the husk and then in south india that is a typical old method of cultivation what they do uh, all these uh, paddy they spread in the field and bullocks are trampled the feet of the bullocks trampled by blocks to separate the kernel from the seeds when the seeds are separated from the husk so that is the best method applied there in south india and uh, i will say one more thing 
uh, that polishing the rice that is done in the rice mills but important nutrients are lost in this method so hand pounded rice that is the best one now we will talk about what kind of disease some common disease which are very common that is rice tungro virus that is the one what is i say rice tungro virus second one the green leaf hopper this is second disease green leaf hopper third rice cane worm rice case worm fourth paddy stem ball fourth paddy stem ball so these four uh, disease you must remember so these are the common disease in rice now we will talk about the problems of the rice cultivation very first problem the average size of land holding in india that is very less and particularly due to that what is the outcome rice yield production is very less so that is very first problem high yield variety of seeds uh, uh, fertilizers manures chemical insecticide all these are lacking in india second important things that farmer do not suitable the price of uh, Uh, for their crops as middlemen play a very important role here because they uh, get the crops from the farmer from the very cheap rate and sold at the high price and third major problem the proper storage facility is not available in india if a storage facility available it is quite the picture will be entirely different in favor of farm and another one disease damage the crop as we talk earlier what kind of disease are very common so that is also one of the problem of rice cultivation now finally we we'll talk about the distribution of the rice rice is grown almost all over india lowland upland lower middle ganga valley brahmaputra valley in the assam eastern and western coastal plain parts of peninsular plain to particularly the tamil nadu is a state which grow three variety of rice thrice in year same way west bengal os aman and boro these are the three variety of rice cultivated in west bengal so these are the largest state where the rice is cultivated but if we will talk about the per hectare productivity of the rice then west bengal tamil nadu and punjab that is the uh, best productivity in the world not only in india in the world now major rice producing state if we will talk first we talk about the areas now we are talking about the state which are the states remember the difference the area the part of the region particular and a state means as a whole joining all areas and region together so that is number one west bengal the uttar pradesh is second one the andhra pradesh is there telangana is there punjab tamil nadu odisha bihar so these are the major producer of rice do you know why the west bengal is one of the largest producer why is the largest in india because there is some ideal condition that is around 15% uh, of the total uh, rice production that is under paddy crop and second important climatical conditions are very suitable there lower ganga valley large scale alluvial soil is available there enable the farmer to grow the variety different type of crop three thrice in year then tamil nadu why the important one because there are 9.32% of the rice that is cultivated net shown in and there the productivity is very higher that is 3 ton per hectare in 1 ton that is 1000 kg so 3 ton that means 3000 kg per hectare so that is the productivity and why tamil nadu is one of the superior one of the best one of the highest because of the green revolution because of the hyvc the high yield variety of the seed that is used fertilizers are used irrigation facilities available there so tamil nadu also grow thrice crop in a year so this is that's why these are the important regions so this is all about rice cultivation now we will talk about the wheat cultivation in india wheat is a staple food of the people of which parts of the country as you are aware northern part of the country and north western part of the country we will talk about the northern parts of the country means punjab haryana western up delhi uh, bihar these and north western rajasthan also the central part of india that one also now what is wheat cultivation and why the wheat is called the staple food of the people of india since 
wheat is consumed on a very large scale on the northern parts as well as northwestern part of the country that's why it is considered a staple food and moreover here it is a temperate crop do you know what is temperate crop the crop which is grown during the winter months which require very cold climatical conditions and the soil which type of soil level plains which type of soil are present fertile well level alluvium so once again fertile plains of north india so in the plain satluj plain gangetic plain this is very ideal place for the cultivation of wheat and uh, moreover we'll talk about the variety of soils where it is well grown that is the well drained fertile fibre loamy soil alluvial soil of clay composition once again the clay means which having the uh, more capacity to hold the moisture and it is generally cultivated immediately after the uh, harvesting of the kharif crop do you know why because after the monsoon rain the soil is very wet so wet field it is very easy to plow the land and it is ready for the cultivation of wheat that's why immediately after harvesting the kharif crop the wheat start so showing period of wheat that is the month of october and november it begins in some part of the country late november so this crop is ready for harvest in the month of march and april that is the harvesting period when the temperature rises little higher that is 21 to 25 degree celsius around but in the early stage of growth that is the temperature requirement is 10 to Uh, 15 degree celsius and somewhere it is less than 10 degree celsius also since it is a temperate crop cool climate is required moreover what we see that it is a rabi crop grown during the winter months and as we know in the northwestern parts of the country in northern part of country some parts which receives the uh, lighter amount of rainfall from the western district Do you know the western disturbance bring the lighter amount of rainfall which is highly beneficial to rabi crop especially the wheat not only the wheat but also the different kind of pulses gram mustard different kind of oil seeds but well it is very highly useful for the wheat cultivation so there is extra advantage of that natural rainfall due to the western disturbances the temperature is here very cool climate moderate climate moderate rainfall that is uh, sufficient for the cultivation of uh, the wheat for the rainfall for the wheat needs 50 to 100 cm of rainfall during the growing season so there is not any problem and wherever the rainfall is less than that the irrigation land is very ideal for the cultivation of wheat so wheat is a normal crop in the northern parts of the country uh little winter rainfall is very helpful for the ripening uh, of the crop ideal and helps in increasing the yield of the wheat but some precautions we should remember the frost that is very highly injurious for this crop particularly in the flowering stage hail storm during the winter season at the time of ripening so that can cause heavy damage to the wheat cultivations and if we will talk about the method of cultivation mostly it is broadcasting dibbling and drilling method of right once again i repeat broadcasting dibbling and drilling and we all talk about in the rice cultivation what are these method now very quickly we can remind that what is harvesting of this particularly the thresher is a kind of machine which is used for uh, this uh, food grains are separated from the husk so thresher is a machine and the method is called threshing so what is threshing threshing is the process which involves the separation of the grain uh, from the uh, spike and some of the old typical method is used uh, it is bullocks are trampled means feet of bullocks or by threshing machines are used and this is we will talk about the fungal disease that is very common that is called rust so what is rust once again a fungal disease called rust that is a fact and moreover striped rust yellow rust black point and loose smut these are diseases once again uh, yellow rust black point and third one loose smut and most common among them is the rust now where it is the geographical areas or the region the uttar pradesh is one of the highest punjab is there the haryana is there 
then uh, why it is here the more common the wheat cultivation is one of the abundant in the world or granary of the wheat cultivation it is called because of the green revolution because the twice green revolution these uh, states having the benefits of this twice means first that is in the 60s and second in the 70 A8, uh, 79, 80s uh, during that time, and before and moreover, high yielding variety of seed is also very common. Proper use of chemical fertilizer, insecticide, pesticide, irrigation system are well developed in these parts. Moreover, it is cultivated in South India also, like uh, Madhya Pradesh is there, Rajasthan, Bihar, Gujarat, uh, Western India, Maharashtra. So wheat is one of the important crops in these uh, uh, areas. In the duration, we talk now. We talk about maize, pulses, and millets. So first, we will talk about pulses. Do you know the pulses uh, category? Uh, pulses is the main food crop, and pulses include gram that is we call chana, urad, moong, lentil, masoor, arhar. So these are the principal crop. Moth is also there. Peas is also in this category. We will consider. So why pulses is the most important vegetarian diet? As we know that. Vegetarian people uh, consume more pulses because it is a good source of protein, very rich in protein, very nutritive value in it. Now another important thing: the pulses has grown along with other rotation crop. Do you know why it is grown along with the other rotation crop? Because pulses having the leguminous plant. What is a leguminous plant? Leguminous plant means the plant which having a root nodules. The root nodules are there. And in the root nodule, that is a some sort of pores there in the roots, and that pores uh, absorb the atmospheric nitrogen. There is a rhizobium bacteria. Once again, I repeat, rhizobium bacteria. That bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. So that is a very useful fer fertilizer for the soil. That's why it is grown as a rotation crop. So pulses is very useful for rotation crop to increase the fertility of the. so now we will talk about what are the climatical conditions for this so 20 to 25 degrees celsius is the ideal temperature for this uh, for all type of pulses rainfall is uh, uh, nevertheless 50 to 100 cm is a uh, must and if we will talk about the method of cultivation it is shown in the september month uh, november month and harvested in february and april it means it matures within 150 Uh, days after showing, and uh, harvesting process same as it is trampled under the feet of the bullocks. Uh, this one of the old method. Thrashing machine is used for that, so there is not any confusion there. Now, what kind of disadvantage uh, from the climatic point of view? Uh, severe cold, very excessive cold, uh, excessive amount of rainfall that is very harmful for this uh, uh, crop. So this is the uh, main thing we. Uh, think uh, about what is maize. Maize is grown both as a rabi crop. Maize is also grown both as a kharif crop. Rabi means the crop which is grown during the winter season. Kharif means the crop which is grown during the summer. So rabi, cool climatical condition. Kharif, the high temperatures are needed. Now this maize grain provides food and used for obtaining starch and glucose. That is the one of the important things. It is a tropical crop. Tropical that means the temperature remains very high throughout the year. It is a curry. It is also grown in Ravi, but where well-drained plain areas. It is grown particularly in the well-drained plain area. And maize is also considered uh, grown almost all parts of the country, and it is uh, used as a rotation crop because it again increases the fertility of the soil. And each and every part of the maize is utilized. For food purpose and for stuff is used for the fodder purpose. Now we will talk about temperature range. That is 21 degrees Celsius, 27 degrees. That is very ideal. But here one important fact to underline and highlight that is the frost that is very injurious to this type of crop. And uh, maize is a rain fed crop. Means entirely depend upon the monsoon rain. And wherever the lack of such rain, there are irrigation facilities quite available. If we will talk about what are the uses, uh, this question asks in very various time classes for exam. So please remember very carefully. Maize is used essentially as a food crop in the form of chapatis, as you know, roasted corn. Uh, it is used as a popcorn. It is used as a confectionery. It is used as a corn flour, and it is used as a uh, excellent fodder for the cattle. 
so this is about what means now we will talk about millets millets are dry crop actually millet word is used for jowar bajra and ragi these three combination together what we call millet millet is a harder and coarser grain what is hard and coarser it is very rough tough hard resistant that is hard coarser means very coarse not soft in nature so that is hard and coarse and what is common about all millets they grown in bunch in very high bunch no more in quantity at the top of the farm and the stem is used for the farm and millet is very essential for the poor man meal why is called the poor man meal because it is very cheaper as compared to rice and wheat because rice and wheat is quite high price for the poor to purchase that's why maize uh, for this millet is considered their important diet who's the poor man me and whole plant is used as a fodder substitute now we talk about millets what type of uh, um, uh, climatical conditions are required for the millets so uh, millet require heat resistant hard drought because where it is very difficult to grow rice and wheat in such areas the millets are grown. so inferior variety of soil it can grow in any variety of soil where it is difficult to grow rice and wheat there the millets are grown comfortably so it is grown mostly in south india peninsular india leeward side uh, western ghat where the amount of rainfall is very little say to be 50 to 100 cm and that is a requirement and it grown in very high temperature ranging between 22 degree celsius 26 degree celsius up to 33 is the maximum temperature where the millets can be grown so it is preferably called dry crops now the question comes why millets are called dry crop since it is grown in the dry parts of the country since it require very less amount of rainfall it require a high temperature near about 33 degrees celsius it is a poor man meal and it is grown everywhere where it is very difficult to grow rice and wheat so these are the important things regarding Melts. In this way, we come to an end of this agriculture part two, chapter food crop. Next time we will come with non-food crop or industrial crop with another module on that. Till then, goodbye. Have a wonderful day.